And I remember my wife complaining about how big the wood was. Not that wood. Today on In the Wood Yard, we've got a pile of wood behind me and it needs to be split. And that's what we're gonna do. But first, we're gonna go do a couple deliveries because Uncle Benjamin needs to come home. Here we go. So yesterday I split this wood right here from this pile. I got about a third of it done and uh, I am going to be splitting that in a little while. But first I got a couple deliveries. I got one that I loaded last night already. I'm gonna go deliver that to my uh, pizza oven guy and we're gonna do that right now. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna load up the truck for another delivery. Uh, and this next guy wants uh, one half to be oak and one half to be cherry and he wants just a face quarter a third of a quarter rick -a -rank -a roll and that's what we're going to do so uh, we're going to go do the delivery right now to the pizza place parm you're going to see that and then we're going to come back and we're going to load up the truck and go do it again No Uncle Benjamin, but I do have a Grant and some Jacksons, and I did a little bit of uh, horse trading. Uh, at the restaurant, he has all these really neat uh, bourbons, and I've never had this one, a brown sugar, so I said, throw that in the pile of money that you're gonna give me and just take it off, so did a little bartering. So you can't go wrong with whiskey. I don't know if you don't like it, but I do. So I backed up to the cherry, right here it is. We're gonna put half of the truckload of cherry in, and then we're going to put in some oak. It has warmed up substantially this morning. It was frosty when I got up, uh, but right now it is, I don't know, it's probably 50, 55 degrees. There's almost no wind. It's supposed to hit low 60s today, which for November is awesome. I'll take it every day. I like global warming, it feels good. Okay, let's talk some more, Dan. So I'm gonna scale up into the, uh, pile here of cherry and we're going to chuck stuff off this is uh stuff that's been cut and split now for months i moisture tested it, it was all 16 17 18 percent somewhere in there so we're going to put about half of a load of cherry in. then we're going to put the, the oak in i'll try to keep the cherry to the front the oak to the back just in case the guy wants it separate i don't know he said just bring them half and half now i'm going to cover some things while i'm chucking wood here that come up all the time so i just thought i would take this opportunity to talk to you because i i've been kind of slacking in my maintenance on the channel for new people um for those of you that haven't been around a long time i've been doing firewood my whole life i am 61 my name is chris i am in wisconsin appleton area and uh, i sell firewood um, i do other things too i'm actually a uh, professional photographer but i started my photography business back in 1982 so i've been doing it forever and i'm um, looking at not doing it anymore because uh, i've been doing it a long time and i i like doing this more and uh, i've uh, been smart with my money over the years and i don't really need to do photography anymore and uh, it's not what it once was anyway my business is not as big as it was so i'm thinking about eventually getting to where all i do is whoopsie all i do is firewood and and youtube i like doing both of them so i might just uh go to that exclusively i do a video every day have been doing a video every day for three and a half years now i have about 1200 videos on my channel and uh like I said, I've been doing firewood since I was about seven, so that's uh, 53 years, something like that, a bunch. Um, my dad and mom heated their house, both their houses I lived in 
uh, with them when I was younger with firewood. So my brothers and I always had to, uh, we weren't cutting the wood so much when we were little, but we, were, we split it and uh, stacked it, carried it, piled it, did all the fun stuff that my dad had us do. So I've been chucking wood into the back of a truck for a very long time. And everybody sees my trucks and they think, oh, you need to put a headache rack in there. You need to put a window protector on there. You're going to break a window. Well, I've been throwing wood into a truck now for 50 some years. My brothers also. None of us have ever broke a window. So if I do break a window, you're going to get to see it. But I figure with the money I saved from not having to buy a, a protector, I could pay for a lot of windows. So never broke a window. Don't plan on starting. I just am careful the way I throw it in. And uh, in general, I can uh, load a, a vehicle like this in 10 minutes or so. It doesn't take too long. So other things that come up all the time people want to know is uh, do I have a wife because they've never seen her because so many other people have their wives on their channel running around in uh, yoga pants and tight shirts. Yeah, that's just not what I'm going to do. My wife might be on my channel someday, and if she does, you're going to get to see how big her brain is, because she's the brains of the operation. She runs my businesses. She takes care of everything. While I'm doing this, she does everything else. So that's what she has to offer, making money. Um, been married to her for 38 years. Does that sound right? Yeah, 38 years. Seems like yesterday. It's gone fast, as you know. I have three kids, and no, they're not gonna be on the channel either. Some of you may have seen my oldest son, Bryce, on the channel from time to time, because he also has a YouTube channel and does some stuff. So he's okay with it. He's an IT guy. He's the one that helps me out behind the scenes. I do all the shooting of the videos. I do all the editing of the videos. I make all the thumbnails. And then he takes it, uploads it, makes sure everything is done legally and according to what's supposed to be done for YouTube. And, uh, and then I answer all the comments every day. Rarely that I miss comments, only if I'm on a vacation or something. I won't answer all of them, but I try to. Um, and uh, yeah, so I do a video every day. Everything on the channel is firewood related. I do have a second channel. My second channel is Out of the Wood Yard, and that's where I have some of my other outdoor activities uh, on there. Uh, I'm an outdoorsman, so I hunt, I fish, I trap, I do a little bit of everything outside. So if you want to see that, go to that channel. There's not a lot of videos on there. I don't post as often as I would like to because I do this so much. Um, but yeah, in a nutshell, that's it. Okay, I think we're just about got enough of this stuff in here. We're getting real close. And we'll go over to the oaken throw a bunch of that in so yeah I have all of my wood in these big bins don't stack wood anymore quit stacking wood because it was a waste of time it dries just as good if not better in these big bins and I had a guy just recently made a comment to me he said you don't cover your wood you need to properly cover and store that wood because it'll rot and it'll mold and it won't be any good well that hasn't been the issue the wood is on pallets off the ground in bins, vertical. There's lots of space here where it can breathe. And uh, the wood dries, fantastic. And I turn my inventory over every year or sooner. So the wood doesn't really get a chance to rot. Um, I think rotting wood is a problem with moisture. You keep it dry, it'll be just fine. Oh, lost one off the side there. Um, if you've got your wood on the ground, it does wick moisture up from the ground. And that's where you have problems. Or if you completely cover it with a material that doesn't allow it to breathe, it can rot that way too. I think that's enough of the cherry. Let's go do some oak now. So now I'm in one of my big oak bins. I have two of them. Um, I have no idea how much wood is in here. People always want to know. I have a lot and a lot I don't know a couple hundred cords total all together maybe 250 full cords of wood and oak is not quite half of it less than half so anyway I'm throwing the oak in now 
this stuff is all cut to a size so it's nice for a fireplace so it's another thing i want to talk about is that a lot of people new to the channel that heat wood heat with wood in their house and maybe not, don't sell it have no concept of what people want for firewood i do not sell to people primarily for people that heat with wood most of the people i sell to are buying one or two face cords a year for their fireplace and they want stuff that will burn easily that is dry ready to burn right now they are not um, worried about having all night chunks that they're filling a boiler or a wood stove with they want to see flames they want to have a fire they want to enjoy it they want to put more wood on and play with it they want the lady of the house to be able to handle it so that is why i have the smaller pieces plus it dries faster so that is part of it i want to be able to turn this wood over in a year or less Whereas if guys that are heating with wood have big, huge man-sized pieces that you got to use three men and a keg of beer to lift, um, the lady of the house generally can't handle those. Or the kids. And it's too big for a lot of the fireboxes. A lot of the people I sell to have newer houses and have small fireboxes. And they specifically tell me over and over and over, I don't want anything big. I got wood from a guy that brought great big, huge monster pieces. I want small stuff that will burn easily, that my wife can handle, that I'll be able to see flames that'll fit in the firebox, nothing more than 17 to 18 inches long, nothing more than hand size, that's what they want. If you go to gas stations and you see bundle wood, you will see the kind of wood, size-wise, that my customers want. They want bundle grade wood to burn with, that's what they want, not the big stuff. So. You have to know your market as far as what people want. Now, when I first started, I was selling wood that was big because that's what I grew up producing for my dad and my brothers and even for myself. Big, huge chunks. And I remember my wife complaining about how big the wood was. Not that wood, but uh, that it was too big for the fireplace. And it just sat there and burned slowly didn't really get to see much for flame and you had to poke it a lot and roll it around you can only fit one or two pieces in at a time well people want to put in five six pieces and see some flame and see it burn so gradually i started going smaller because i had people that would say to me do i need to split this down will this burn is this good wood is it really dry because i used to dry stuff for two years but now that i sell wood i want to turn it over in less than a year that is the goal and oak in general dries much slower than everything else so i split it down a little bit smaller so it dries faster and so that it burns easier and that the people like it so this is what i produce now so for those of you that heat with wood don't sell wood or you only sell to people for heating i have a different type of customer um, i am in the fox river valley area here there's probably a quarter million people within 10 15 miles of me it's pretty spread out but it's more residential or suburban and these people don't have boilers they don't have wood stoves they have a fireplace or a fire pit for the majority of them i do have some firewood customers that do heat with wood and even those people don't want big monster pieces a few do and i do have some stuff for them if they want it so that is pretty much it now when i'm talking about selling wood i've been selling wood now for about 10 years actively and the reason I started selling wood is I really enjoy producing wood and being outside and making it feel like you get exercise and you accomplish something at the same time that's usable, that you can enjoy yourself or for others. Um, so I started uh, selling wood, like I said, about 10 years ago because I had about 40 face cords or what would that be? I don't know, 13 full cords, something like that, 14. And my wife says, what are you going to do with all that wood? Because I just kept cutting more and more and more. And I said, well, maybe I'll sell some. She says, well, good, because it's taking up a lot of space because I didn't have the storage facility like I do here on the farm now. And uh, so I put an ad in uh, Craigslist. And in less than two weeks, the wood was gone. I sold it all. So then I started thinking, well, I made myself a, you know, a few thousand dollars, which paid for chainsaws, paid for a bunch of stuff. I thought, well, maybe next year I'll cut a little bit more. Well, the next year I, I cut a lot more. I cut about 80 face cords, which is divided by three. That's how many full cords there is. A bunch. I sold all that very easily within a couple months, and I was out of wood. So 
And I thought, well, I better cut more wood the next year. So the next year I cut a lot more. I cut about 120, which is about 40, yeah, 40 full cords. And cause I can do the math in my head on that one. And uh, that all sold real fast. So then I kind of started realizing I had a small business going here. So then I started reinvesting into other things. I started buying more and better chainsaws. I bought a better splitter. Eventually I bought a, I bought a bigger truck. I bought this truck. Uh, I bought this truck brand new eight years ago. And I use it primarily just for hauling wood. That's its main purpose. And I, I haul wood with it almost every day, or I pull a trailer loaded with wood almost every day. I've got 235,000 miles on it now. It's just a half ton Toyota Tundra. Works just fine. Everybody's telling me I need to get a three quarter ton. Well, it'd be nice. Or a one ton, that'd be nice. I don't really need it. It's more of a want than a need. This has done everything I've needed it to do, and I might get another one. Or I might get a three quarter ton. I would like one, so. So after selling wood, for the first few years, then I started buying truckloads of wood because I couldn't physically cut enough in the woods anymore because I didn't have time to go cut wood. So I started buying semi loads. A lot of people call them triaxles, but around here we don't call them triaxles. We call it a truckload because most of the trailers around here, trucks around here, are a, a, a loader truck and then a pup on the back so they can bring 12 to 16 full cords, log cords at a time. Whereas a triaxle can't bring that much. But around here, that's pretty much what we do. Our standard size logs around here is 100 inches because that's what the paper mills want. So we don't have tree length logs. We have um, 100 inch logs is kind of the standard. Like I said, that's because that's what the paper companies want. And so that became the size that everybody has. So that's why I have the size of logs that I have. And uh, I now have a processor that Easton made company sent me to process wood with, wood with if you want to see the videos of that I got a processor for processing all this wood and right now after eight nine ten years however long it's been I now produce about I don't know 250 maybe this year I'll do 300 full cords and that's about as big as I think I want to get because I don't want this to be something where I got to start hiring a whole bunch of people buy more equipment and growing a whole nother business I'm at the age now where I just enjoy doing this and I think I'm going to kind of keep it about this size because people are always telling me, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to buy that, you need to do this. Well, if they want to do it so bad, they should do it themselves. That's my opinion. Um, I don't want to be rude to anybody, but um, I do what works for me. So we're going to go deliver this load right now and see if we can go pick up another Uncle Benjamin and a Jackson because that's what this is going to be. The delivery is about seven miles that way. So here we go. Delivery time. So another thing that comes up all the time is, how do I know how much wood I have in here? This is a six and a half foot long box, got about two foot high sides. When you throw the wood in loose, it is a face cord or a third of a cord or a rick or a rank or a roll, whatever you call it in your part of the country. That's another thing a lot of people don't realize. Where you live determines what you call wood as far as the measurement. Around here, face cord. Midwest, face cord. That's what this is called. On the eastern part of the United States, legally, they have to call this a third of a cord because it has to be called either a full cord or a portion of a cord as far as a fraction of it. Uh, so this would be a third of a cord. Now, down south, they call this a rick. Um, other parts of the country, I've heard rank. Also, I've heard roll. But when you stack this, it is eight feet long, four feet high, 16 inch long pieces, which is one third of a cord or a face cord. And that's what fits in this size truck. Now, if I was to stack it in here, I can get a half of a full cord if I stack it just level. Now, I throw this in loose because it's easy. I don't have to stack it to measure it ahead of time. I can just throw it in from my big bins and it's good to go. So it's way faster, saves me a ton of time, literally hundreds of hours a year of stacking and effort and bending over, all that stuff. So this is way easier. So I highly recommend it. It's worked out fantastic for me. Now we're gonna go deliver this load. I am back in the wood yard after my delivery that I just did. And while I was doing my delivery, I got two more orders. Uh, they're for tomorrow. I have one other one for tomorrow. So tomorrow I have three orders. And the first one that I have is going to be a truckload of oak, but I'm not going to load that up yet. 
The first thing I'm going to do is load up my trailer because that is for one face cord of oak and one face cord of hickory, so two thirds of a cord. And that's going to be my second delivery, but I'm going to get it loaded up right now, park the trailer, then fill the truck up. And then first thing tomorrow morning, my truck is ready to go for my first delivery. Then I'm going to go deliver this load and then I got another one after that. So I do that a lot of days where I've got multiple deliveries. I try to get ready the day ahead of time. Saves me a bunch of time in the morning so that I don't have to get up super early and load wood right away first thing in the morning. I can just go do a delivery, get it done, come back, pick up the trailer, go do another delivery and come back and then load them up and go again. Which is one of the reasons why I'm thinking about getting a second delivery trailer, something smaller, something that will fit one, two face cords, two thirds of a cord. If I put sides on it, maybe I could get a full cord in it, but I do so many deliveries with one face cord or one third of a cord or two, uh, which is two thirds of a cord. I do a lot of those. I mean, that's probably the majority of what I do are those. Uh, a couple of years ago, I went and added up all of my firewood sales, number of customers and divided it out. I came up with 2.5 face cords or thirds of a cord. So a little less than a full cord is the average. There are a lot of people that buy a full cord or two full cords, sometimes even three full cords. Um, but the majority of people, two face cords or two and a half, is what is the standard amount on average that I sell. So a smaller trailer would be nice. And the reason I would like it is because uh, I'll be able to uh, have it ready to go again. Like I said, a day ahead of time, I could have both my trailers loaded or even my truck for that matter. Um, I'm thinking about possibly getting a new truck in the next year or so. And if I do that, having that extra trailer would be nice because it would save wear and tear in the truck. Now, some of you have said, oh, I thought you were a anti-show pony. Well, I am. I have my truck as a work truck. I've got 235,000 miles on it. I haul wood with it every day and have since I got it. Um, I just think that if I'm gonna go spend a bunch of money, I'd like to make the truck last a little longer. I will still use it as a work truck, um, but if I can get a smaller trailer that will save me some time and effort, I think that's what I might end up doing. So we're gonna see what happens. So we're gonna chuck some wood into the trailer now. So I just backed up the trailer in between these piles. This one's kind of a tight one. I only got about six, seven inches on each side. So when I back in, I gotta be pretty careful. So on this side over here, I have oak. On this side over here, I have hickory and he wants half and half so that's what we're gonna do but the first thing i'm gonna do is this is the probably the third time i've had a request for this guys that buy wood for me they're like hey do you have any rounds so i could have like a chunk of wood for a chopping block i said absolutely so here it is he's getting a big chunk of big chunk of bass but i tried to pick out one that was real flat so that when he puts wood on it it stays there but put that right in the back here so things like that, or if someone says, hey, do you have kindling? A lot of times if they buy a full cord, you know, I'll throw a bundle in for free. If they want, you know, several of them, I just, then I charge them, it's eight bucks a bundle. A lot of people will buy two, three bundles. Um, so anyway, there's that. We're gonna close this back up and we're gonna start chucking some wood right now. There it is. Two thirds of a cord, two face cords, two ricks to ranks to rows. So there is a uh, half hickory and that's in front and then the oak is in back. And I'm gonna disconnect the trailer now and then we're gonna uh, bring the truck back over here. I'm gonna fill that up with oak from my first delivery tomorrow morning. And then my deliveries are done. I mean, loaded for tomorrow. They're not done, I still have to do them. And I was planning on splitting some wood because I got a couple hours before it's dark out, but I just got a text, something I have to go take care of like in the next half hour. So I'm gonna get this loaded, get this moved and then get the truck loaded up right now. All right, so I backed up the truck. We're gonna load up a bunch of oak right now. I'm gonna fill this up and that'll be my first delivery tomorrow. So let the trucking begin. Well, folks, Darcy blows. The wood is in the truck and is loaded for tomorrow morning. Here is my wood kingdom. I'm gonna do a little scan pass. There's the bins, mixed hardwood, oak, all oak, all hickory with uh, beech at the end, and then hard maple, hard maple, birch, mixed hardwood over there, 
and there's two truckloads of oak and there's some wood over there that's oak and cherry and uh, locust and then there's a bunch a load there of some mixed stuff there's cherry over there and over there's mixed stuff over there way over by the yellow truck that's burnt stuff and uh the wood is in and i thought i was going to have time to do some splitting today but i got a call and there's something i got to go take care of there's only about an hour and a half of daylight left anyway so i'm going to go take care of what i got to do and then tomorrow morning this load is going first and then um, i got a load to deliver right after that and then another load right after that and then while i was loading this load i got another phone call from a guy that wants a face cord a third of a cord same what's in here right now so i have four deliveries tomorrow so maybe tomorrow i won't even be able to split we'll see so busy 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 this time of year everybody wants wood and they want it now so that's what i do i deliver that's it for today folks hit the buttons i'll be back tomorrow morning 5 30 a.m another video for you if you want to watch more videos right now on my channel there's over 1200 approaching 1300 videos you should go check them out good night Irene. Mm -hmm.